Locked On Podcast Network and Odyssey present Locked On Sports Today. Will the Cowboys exercise some Thanksgiving Day football demons? Hope abounds for a Lions team that fans have low expectations for against the Bills. And tonight is a season-defining game for the New England Patriots. I'm Peter Bukowski, starting your day with the can't-miss stories and biggest debates in sports. You're locked on sports today. Searching all major sports. Found. Let's start with the biggest story. Fresh off an absolute domination of the Minnesota Vikings, the Dallas Cowboys play host to the New York football Giants themselves off a loss against the Detroit Lions at home. Two seven and three teams vying for top spots in the NFC East and the NFC playoff picture. Joining me now from Locked on Cowboys, Marcus Mosher. And Marcus, it is one of my biggest pet peeves to hear announcers say, how big a game is this? Or how big a test is this? Because it is just such a silly question. But I'm going to ask it of the Giants game because the Giants, at least to my eyes, are not a seven and three team. But they just find ways to win these games. By talent, I don't think this is a big test for the Dallas Cowboys. But here we are, and I'm going to ask you just how big a test is this for the Cowboys against the Giants? I think the Cowboys match up pretty well with the Giants. The problem is, Peter, the Cowboys have been dreadful on Thanksgiving Day. I mean, basically my whole lifetime. In their last 10 (laughs) Thanksgiving games, they've only won three of them. Oof. They've been a, a touchdown uh, favorite in five of their last like, seven Thanksgiving games, and they lost them all outright. Like They just don't play well on Thanksgiving. I think it's important for Mike McCarthy's team to come out and play well. And listen, they don't need to have a blowout win over the Giants, but yeah, they need to show that they can take care of business when they're supposed to take care of business. This is a Giants team, and the reason I'm asking is because they, they played above their record. Like sure. I, I, I think even honest Giants fans would be like, yeah, I don't know if we're a 7-3 and three team. If there is something where you're going, okay, this worries me, is it just Saquon Barkley or is there something else? It's the whole run game, right? Because okay. Saquon Barkley is obviously phenomenal, but Daniel Jones is a really good runner too, and they yeah. can do some pretty cool things in the run game uh, to make it hard for defenses. On top of that, Cowboys whole defensive line room mispracticed on Monday and Tuesday with an illness. Seems like a stomach bug is going on uh, around there. I am worried that the Giants are just going to be able to kind of nickel and dime them the whole game. And all of a sudden it's late in the fourth quarter and we've got a 15 to 12 game where <laughs> Cowboys are in a slug fest. Like that's, yeah. that's the worst possible case for the Cowboys here. This is a, a situation where you're, you're riding high off a big win to what degree are you worried about a letdown in this spot? And and what would give you hope that we won't see that, especially on a short week? Yeah, I don't think it's going to be a letdown, right? If the Cowboys lose this game, it's not because they came in with low energy or whatever. It's just they haven't played good, again, on these Thanksgiving games. But for, for me, I think there's still a lot of confidence that you have Dak Prescott back. The offense is finally clicking. They do have a lot of pass rushers. They're just a more talented team. Yeah. You would think, even if you start off the game slow, that the talent should eventually win out. If if this team falters, you said it's not going to be the energy. It's not going to be you know a, a, a letdown. What would it be? I mean, just playing down to their competition. They've done it a few times this year, including a game in Green Bay against the Packers. Um, we we've seen this happen. Like they. Can sometimes get into these grinded out type of games and puts a lot of pressure on the offense to score and whatever. It's a divisional game, also, Peter. Like in a primetime spot, a lot of eyes are watching. The Giants have a lot of pride and they're a pretty decent team that's well coached. I would not be surprised if this is a close game. Stay up to date all year on the Dallas Cowboys by subscribing to Locked On Sports today and the Locked On Cowboys podcast on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. Happy Thanksgiving, and thanks for making Locked On Sports today your first listen. Coming up, the Dallas Cowboys have won surprisingly few Thanksgiving Day games in the last decade. Can they put aside the past and put together a win against a division rival? Can we pause the pod for a second? Okay, we're paused. Great, because 
You've got to try this. I'm talking about the new built flavors. Cookie dough topper, coconut brownie, coconut brownie topper. These things are the absolute goods. Anyone who hasn't tried Built Bars before, they're literally the best tasting protein bars that have ever been made, ever been built, you might say. They are revolutionizing nutrition because they're covered in 100% real chocolate, but you get 17 grams of protein and usually just 130 calories. That is unbelievable. And the taste, you will not believe the taste. Speaking of unbelievable, you have to try these for yourself. I brought a box home for my family for Thanksgiving, for them to try the toffee almond, which are awesome, by the way. Get 15% off your order right now by using the promo code LOCKEDON15 at built.com. In a weird twist of fate, because of snowstorms and six feet of snow, the Bills are going to be playing twice in Detroit in the span of five days, a Thanksgiving tradition that the Lions will be there. But of course, Buffalo playing in Detroit because of all the snow pushing them out of Buffalo. The Lions, meanwhile, come in on a three-game win streak, two of those games in division. They just beat the New York Giants, who look like they're a playoff team, so this game Looks much better right now than it did maybe when the schedules came out originally. Matt Derry from Locked on Lions. We had him on the show earlier this week talking about this resurgent Lions team. Matt, there is some hope in, in Lions Nation this time of year. What are, the, what are the chances that they can actually compete against this Bills team that right now most people have penciled in as either the favorite or the co-favorite in the AFC? You know, I used to say, Pete, on my old radio show, the hope and fear bistro, you know, it's always open with this Lions team, uh, but it has been hopeful the last three weeks. And again, they're getting some stops when they have to, regardless of who they're playing against. It was Aaron Rodgers a couple weeks ago, Justin Fields ran all over them, but when they needed a stop at the end of the game, they got two sacks and they won the football game. And then, like you said, on Sunday, holding Saquon Barkley to under 30 yards uh, rushing when he came in as, as the best in the game is, is pretty remarkable. So it starts on defense. The other thing, too, that I think, Peter, they're doing well is they're taking care of the football. Uh, everybody ripped on the defense, and then rightfully so at the start of the year, but when you're when you're defending a short field because Jared Goff gives the ball to the other team, mm. that's not going to help your cause. Over the last three weeks, it was Rodgers giving the ball to the other team. Fields, Danny Dimes, two picks on Sunday. Goff's been flawless. He hasn't been great, but he's not throwing that Goffy in third quarter pick six like we're used to seeing, and all of a sudden, they're winning, and uh, it's starting to rub off uh, all over the place, uh, offense, defense, and special teams. Complimentary football, like uh, Bill Belichick says. Well, and, and that's the that's got to be part of the roadmap here, right? Josh Allen, over the last month, really has thrown some sloppy interceptions, some like early career Josh Allen kind of interceptions. And if you're the Lions, you're going, hey, we've been opportunistic lately. Josh Allen has sort of been the opposite of that. He's thrown some of those Jared Goffian type interceptions. That has to be one of the, the ways that this team can say, hey, look, if we get a, a pick or two, we can be right in this thing because we know we can score with a team like Buffalo. The question is, can we get stops? Yeah, no question. And Bill's Mafia invaded Ford Field this past Sunday in their victory uh, over the Clowns. Now, think <laughs> about this. When you look at and what they had what, to clean what, up from a carnival, so that was fitting that it, it that it was well, in fact. I don't know what's going on in Cleveland <laughs> right now, but um, in all honesty, that crowd Thursday is going to be into it. You're talking about a three game win streak for the yeah. first time since 2017, and Jim Caldwell. Um, you know, fans have been. You know, they they listen. They hear what the national people are saying. Oh, another Lions game. I don't want to watch the Lions. Well, the Lions are interesting now. There was a reason they were only three point underdogs going to that Giants game. Vegas knew the Lions went in there and manhandled New York. Now. This is a big test. Can they handle the Bills? Uh, Buffalo's been through a lot with the travel in the snow. Will their legs be a little woozy for this game? Uh, Jeff Okuda not playing is going to be a real big loss for the Lions. Uh, I don't know who's going to guard, going to guard Stephon Diggs, but that would have been a really great matchup to watch. He's going to be out with a concussion, so that's going to hurt. Uh, we'll see if the Lions can run the football like they've been doing over the last few weeks. Not going to be easy against Milano and, and that Bills defense. If you go beyond this game, even if the Lions take the L on Thanksgiving, it looks like a manageable schedule. Now, nine and eight might not be enough to get in, but they could get hot down the stretch, still have the Jags, still have the Jets, still have the Bears, still have the, the Packers, which no longer feels like the same sort of game that it, that it was maybe at the beginning of the year. And who knows? That's week 18. That could be Jordan Love in that game. And we saw the Lions beat Jordan Love in week 18 last year. 
what do you think the, the realistic number is for this team if they if they want to have a chance to to get in the mix? I mean, I, I'm not ready, Pete, to, to anoint them as a playoff team. I, I know people are looking at the schedule and look, the next three are at home. Uh, Bills and Thanksgiving, you never know. And certainly, like you said, Jacksonville and, and Minnesota, whom quite honestly, the Lions should have beaten in Minnesota beat the first earlier time. in the year. Yeah, it, they were right there. So missed field goals and, and Dan Campbell uh, mistakes. But now the coaching's been better. Um, they're feeling good about themselves. They got to stay healthy and keep something in mind. I don't think it'll be this week, maybe next week. A return of Jamison Williams would be mm. humongous for this offense. They got DJ Chark back on Sunday. If they get Jamison Williams back, who knows? I mean, how good he's only a rookie, but they've been waiting for him. And, uh, this would be a nice addition. So keep an eye on that too. Stay up to date all year on the Detroit Lions by subscribing to the Locked On Sports Today podcast and the Locked On Lions podcast on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get podcasts. Coming up, tonight's game between the Patriots and Vikings is a season-defining moment for Bill Belichick and New England. In the Thanksgiving nightcap, after you've had way too much food and potentially way too much to drink, Maybe you're on your second or third cup of coffee. We've got Patriots Vikings in a terrific matchup. One of the best matchups of the weekend, Thursday, Sunday, doesn't matter. A six and four Patriots team, a team that escaped with a win against the Jets. Thanks to a walk off punt return. And then you have the reeling Minnesota Vikings off a beatdown at the hands of the Dallas Cowboys. Joining me now from Locked On Patriots, Mike DeBate. And Mike, this is a Patriots team that continues to win. They're very much in the thick of the AFC playoff race, but it feels like they have a number of questions surrounding them right now. Skill players, quarterback, all of that stuff. Where does this team stand with Mac Jones and the quarterback? Well, that's going to be the ultimate question. And honestly, Peter, I really think that this team is going to perhaps define their season with this game coming up on Thursday night. I know wow. that may sound a little melodramatic, but this is a great litmus test for the Patriots on both sides of the ball. Also, the coaching staff, they're going to have to come up big against a team that is going to have a very bitter taste in their mouth after that bury the game ball type of loss that the <laughs> Minnesota Vikings had to the Dallas Cowboys earlier this weekend. But New England right now is going to face a tough test. They haven't gone up against a an offense that has the type of weapons that Minnesota's had in quite some time. You look at Justin Jefferson, TJ Hawkinson at the tight end position. Patriots have traditionally had difficulty defending tight ends. Dalvin Cook, the last I checked, pretty good running back as well. And Kirk Cousins, I know he sometimes has the reputation of shrinking when the moment is big, but this is an opportunity for him to be able to exercise those demons. So defensively, the Patriots have looked solid. They're going to have to have their best effort in quite some time to keep that momentum going. But offensively, you hit the nail on the head. This team has tons of question marks. Offensive line, quarterback. Uh, a lot right now, if you're a New England Patriots fan, to be concerned about heading into this one. Yeah, and, and you know, it's primetime Kirk Cousins, so we have to add that into all of this, primetime Kirk Cousins. <laughs> the stats are not favorable to our pal Kirk, chained up Kirk on the on the flight home. Uh, Mike, what's, what's really interesting about this Patriots team is if you look at the box score for Mac Jones, it looks pretty nice against the Jets. Yeah. 23 of 27, 246, doesn't throw a pick a rating over 100, and yet they could not generate offense. They're going to need to score points against Minnesota. How, to your mind, will they be able to do that? It's going to be a number of different things, but most importantly, what the Patriots have to do is learn how to get the ball into the red zone and be able to score in the red zone. These are two things that they have not mastered. Is that all? Get to the 20 and then score inside the 20. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it sounds as simple as anything. And, uh, you know, it's so difficult for this team to do. Look, the Patriots crossed midfield and got into Jets territory and into the red zone five out of their 11 drives. They could not be able to advance the ball past the 20 in most of them. And the reason why is untimely penalties moving them back and also consistent pressure being placed on Mac Jones. Mac Jones had an average of 2.81 seconds to get the ball out of his hands first snap on Sunday against a very aggressive Jets defensive front. You know Minnesota's watching that game film. They're watching the weaknesses in this offensive line, and right now there are a ton of them. Somewhat good news for the New England Patriots today. David Andrews thought to be lost for the season. He was actually back at practice after suffering what many believe could have been a season-ending thigh injury. Goes to show you the toughness, the metal, and the perseverance of David. 
still a little early to determine whether or not he's going to be out there on Thursday. But if the Patriots are forced to play without him and Isaiah Wynn is also absent from practice, he's their starting tackle. You're looking at a makeshift line once again for the Patriots. Could be a long night for Mac Jones in Minnesota. Patriots are going to have to do a very good job of scheming to protect their quarterback and keep those blitzes coming from the second and third level of the defense. That's Max Kryptonite, and that has really caused problems for him this year. So Patriots have to do it, and they have to do it where it counts in scoring position. Stay up to date all year on the New England Patriots by subscribing to the Locked On Sports today and the Locked On Patriots podcasts on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get podcasts. The football part of Thanksgiving is easy. I think the Lions are going to hang with the Bills and maybe even pull the upset. Though, I mean, let's not go totally crazy. I think the Cowboys are going to take pretty easy care of the Giants. And I think the Patriots are going to upset the Vikings, who are just not nearly as good as their record would suggest. That part, it's easy to make picks. And it's not always easy to be right, but it's certainly easy to make picks. What is often harder is to take this holiday to heart, to understand that there are hundreds of people who make football possible for us every Thanksgiving, from the crews to the security at the stadium to the ticket takers and the concession stand operators. Those people, they're not with their families on Thanksgiving. And that is to go along with the thousands, if not tens of thousands of people who make sure our markets are still operational, our doctors, hospitals, all gas stations who make sure life can still run so we can enjoy our holidays. Yes, let's be thankful for all of the people, and there are a lot of them that make football possible on Thanksgiving. But let's also take a minute to appreciate the people who make everything else possible, not just on Thanksgiving, but in our daily lives. Understanding that our own lives have hectic schedules and we can't always focus on those other things. But on a day like Thanksgiving, I think it's important that we recognize that, that we take time to recognize and be thankful for everyone that we don't think about on a regular basis who helps make sure all of our lives run a little bit smoother. And finally, here are five NFL on Thanksgiving Day trivia facts. Teams with the highest winning percentage on Thanksgiving, the Philadelphia Eagles, they're six and one. Teams with the lowest winning percentage on Thanksgiving, Pittsburgh, two and six. A little surprising, battle of the Keystone State. Only current NFL team not to have played a Thanksgiving Day game, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Home teams are 0-9. 0-9 the past three seasons on Thanksgiving Day games. And the highest scoring game since 1970. Highest combined score, 84 points. The Packers and the Lions combined for 84. Packers won 44-40. to That was all the way back in 1986. The lowest scoring game since 1970, 16 points. Chicago 10 Detroit 6, 1993. I swear that game has happened 10 times since then, too. Since 1970, Miami has the record for most points scored on Thanksgiving. They hung 55 on St. Louis in 1977. And the fewest points scored, yeah, you guessed it, zero. The Cowboys got the goose egg in 1999. Five other times in that span, a team was shut out, including Dallas in 1989, Chicago 1979, and Detroit. Oh, no. Three times, 1988, 1975, and 1973. Thanks for making Locked On Sports today your first listen. Now go find your favorite team's Locked On podcast and make them your second listen. Coming up on tomorrow's show, we get you ready for all the football you'll watch while you eat turkey leftovers. So at least until tomorrow, stay Locked On Sports today. Locked On Podcast Network and Odyssey present Locked On Sports Today. For more episodes of Locked On Sports today, go to our video on demand. Click on sports at the top of your screen. There you'll find past episodes of Locked On Sports today, plus other Locked On shows on demand.